Now here's the old leader is going to go down now. Saul's attempt to kill David. He's going to try to kill David in several ways. Saul's going to take David, try to take him in several ways. The first way is uh, he tries through his daughter, Michal. Or you guys would, what would you guys pronounce her name? Michael? Or how, how do you? I don't know how it's pronounced in English. Let's just, I, I just say Michal, like the Hebrew Michal. They used to have a song, Michal, my bell. Anyways, someone, you heard it. Anyways, so anyways, Saul's daughter, Michal, was in love with David. So his, Saul's daughter falls in love with David. Beautiful, you know, thing. And when David, when Saul was told about it, it pleased him. He said, I will give him to, give her to him, he thought, so that she may be a snare to him. Is he going to use his daughter's love for David to kill David? Is this guy wicked? Okay, so what does he do? David comes up and says, hey, it's a big thing. You marry the king's daughter. The king's daughter, what do you have to have when you get married? All guys know this. You have to have the same thing. When a guy gets married, he's got to have money, right, to marry someone. You've got to have a dowry to pay. And so basically David comes up. David's a poor man. And so in the words of Simon and Garfunkel and also in chapter 18, verse 23, they repeated these words to David. And David said, do you think it a small matter to become a king's son-in-law? I am just a poor boy, and my story seldom told. And he goes off, and I'm sorry, that was actually a paraphrase with Simon and Garfunkel. He said, I am only a poor man and little known. And David says, I don't have any money to pay this king. How can I come up with a king's dowry for the king's daughter? And the king says, no problem, David. I'll take care of it. I just want a um, hundred Philistine foreskins. So David goes out, sets up a little bucket and a little bell, and he says, donations, donations, Philistine foreskins, Philistine foreskins. And the Philistines come up and donate all these foreskins, and David goes back, and I've got... Uh, no, you say, Hellenbrand, that's really bad. I got a, this imagination. I don't know. Anyways, was, it's not my, I was born this way, but it just, okay. Now, what is the only way, Saul knows this, Saul knows this. What is the only way, the only way David is going to be able to get a Philistine foreskin? There's only one way he's going to be able to get that. He's going to have to do what? He's going to have to kill a Philistine. And he comes up with 100 Philistine foreskins. Does that mean that David goes against 100 guys? Is that a problem? One of those guys is going to take him out. That's what Saul figures. Okay, so Saul figures 100 Philistines. What's David do? David comes back with not 100. He comes back with 200, okay? Is this really gross and things? Now, somebody, I forget, it was a couple of years ago, students sat in the back row, skipped close to class. You know, most of the time the kids skipped the class and stuff, knew nothing of what went on in the course. And he pops in and says, David killed Philistines like that. That's wicked. He just killed them for their foreskins and stuff like that. The Bible, David's doing this. Question, is everything David done sanctioned by God? Did David do a whole bunch of stuff? Some of the stuff was good and some of the stuff was bad and stuff like this. Are they at war? Are they at war with the Philistines? They're at war with the Philistines and stuff. So I don't know that we need to justify this and things. It's what happened. It's what the king required. It's what David did. There's no commentary. It's just history. People do bad stuff. And I just, you know, so anyways, you got to chill out on some of that stuff. Uh, now, another way. David's playing the harp. David's playing the harp. Saul's feeling down. David plays the harp. Saul grabs his spear, and what does he do? He chucks his spear at David. Is David a warrior? Is David a warrior? David plays the harp, but can he also dodge spears at the same time? This guy's quick. This guy's quick. The spear comes at him. He dodges the spear, dodges the bullet, so to speak. Now what happens? So he dodges in chapter 19. He, Saul actually tries to spear him to death. Then Michal, his wife, puts an idol in his bed, covers him up with sheets. Saul comes in, is going to kill David. He pulls the covers back, and what's there? This idol. But by the way, what does that tell you about Michal? Did she have idols? Saul's family have idols there? It just tells you, is everything Jehovah worship pure? Or are these families all messed up? And so here you have Michael's idol hiding. She uses the idol to hide David, and David gets away from Saul. So Saul tried to kill him at least those times. Now comes a, one of the, this is one of the beautiful, most beautiful stories in the scripture. David and Jonathan. Um, Jonathan knows that as far as his father's going to try to kill David. Jonathan has suspicions, and he's saying, my dad's, you know, and David's never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything, great or small, without confiding in me, Jonathan says. Why would he hide this from me? It is not so. 
And David says, and yet surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only one step between me and death. So basically David and Jonathan go out there and um, basically let me just set the story up. Jonathan says, okay, Jonathan is a bow and arrow guy. Okay, Jonathan is known for his bow and arrow guy. David is a slingshot guy. Jonathan goes out, he's going to practice shooting the bow. When he practices shooting the bow, he tells David, they set up the signal. Do friends ever set up signals? Do friends ever set up signals? He says, if I tell the kid to go beyond it, you got, I missed, you got to go back to get the arrow. The kid's going to go out and get the arrow. He's going to shoot the bow. The kid's going to chase the arrow down and bring it back. And if he said, if I tell the kid go beyond, he said, when I go like that, you know that my father's going to try to kill you. Okay, so they set up the signal. Jonathan goes in and talks to his father. You know what his father does? His father picks up a spear and chucks it at Jonathan. He's so angry at Jonathan. So now Jonathan goes and he says, man, he's going to try to kill David. So he goes out, shoots the bow, the arrow goes. Jonathan says to the boy, go beyond like that. And David knows it's over. Their friendship, their friendship's at an end at this point. Um, and so uh, David um, and Jonathan know that uh, basically David's got to take off. They're not going to see each other. After the boy had gone, this is chapter 20, verse 41. After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept, but David wept the most. And so you get this kind of comment on David. They kissed each other, wept, and David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for we have sworn friendship. We have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord. And the Lord is witness between you and me, between your descendants and my descendants forever. Would David later on be true to this vow, this, this vow that he made to Jonathan to take care of Jonathan's descendants? Does anybody remember Mephibosheth, the guy that was lame in both legs? David takes care of Jonathan's son after Jonathan is long dead. David takes care of this. Do any of you guys, it's just interesting, have you guys ever heard of blood brothers and things? Um, now, you guys don't do it in your age because blood, you know, you know those people, they don't share blood with anybody else. I don't recommend this. But when, when I was young, you know, we, I don't know, we just didn't have it that way. And so Dave Remus is my, Dave Remus is my blood brother. And so when we were young, we cut, you basically cut yourself and then you, you share blood with one another. And then he's like my blood brother for life, okay? And so, no, ser seriously. And then that meant we were, anyways. And so you have these kind of things. David and Jonathan are really tight. Now, what's, what's going to be the problem with the story here is they split up at this point, and that's uh, the next thing we're going to see Jonathan is when he's dying. So, anyways, it's kind of sad. But uh, that's what friends are for. He's trying to warn David. Now, David is going to flee. David realizes now Jonathan's told him, Saul's going to kill you. David's going to flee. And so David starts running. There's a map here that I want to go through four places David's going to run, and we'll, we'll chase these down later with the narrative, but let me just show you on the map where it is. First of all, David's going to go up to, on a, it's actually in your Bibles, it's called Nob. Does anybody remember the priests of Nob protect David? So David's going to go to the priest of Nob. Saul is from in here. Saul's from over here. David goes to the priest of Nob. They're going to give him the sword of Goliath, and they're going to protect him. So the priests of Nob, but then the priests of Nob are all going to get killed. 85 of them are going to get killed. Okay, David then flees from there. He flees down to Gath. Now, now, by the way, why was that really stupid? Who's from Gath? That's Goliath's hometown. You just took out the big guy from their town. They're, you know, they're the biggest guy they've had probably ever. You just took that guy off and chopped off his head. And then David goes down to Gath and then goes into the town and says, hey, I want to be a Jewish mercenary with the, the Philistines now. Okay, I just want to say, not too, you know, I don't know. Anyways, there was some problems with that. I don't think that was the brightest move ever that David made. So he goes to Gath. That doesn't work out for various reasons. So David then hightails it up to a place called Kila. In the city of Kila, this is where the first time in Scripture, you know how I always push that thing that there are possible futures and things? I will show you in the text at Kila, David is going to ask God whether Saul comes down and, and, and he asks God some things about the future. And there seems to be multiple futures here at Kila. We'll look at that in a minute. Now from Kila, Saul's going to come down here. David's, the Philistines went up and attacked Kila. David protects the city of Kila from the Philistines. So David should be the town hero, but the, not really. Then lastly, David goes up to Carmel. And up at Carmel, that's in the desert, there's a guy named Nabal who has a wife named, does anybody remember the wife's name? 
Abigail. And this is where Nabal and Abigail and that whole situation takes place with David up at Carmel. So David's going to kind of make this run away from Saul because Saul's trying to kill him. And David's going to flee to these four places. And what I'd like to do is just kind of go through the places and hit each one of them and things and just uh, kind of give a summary of, this, of the stories rather than going over them in detail. <clears throat> 